Do you want to get into shape but are tired of using the same old dumbbells? Then use the power of a shape to get your body fit enough to do a single push-up. But wait, there's more. It's also a Nintendo game. Now this looks like a job for me. Fitness games exist. Why work out when you can work out while looking stupid? Fitness games have existed since the dawn of man, but they only really started mattering once Nintendo got involved with the power pad. Or whatever Atari was doing over there. But beyond the power pad, technology kept getting more and more advanced, and finally, it hit its peak. The Wii might just be one of the most important console releases of the 2000s. It truly brought an innovation that no other console had at the time. Wii Sports was bundled in with most systems, and families everywhere ate it up. The game truly showed what the Wii Remote could do. It was like, whoa, the ball moves when I move. I'll take 82 million copies, please. There was also a later attachment for the controller called Wii Motion Plus. I don't have one, but that's because they later built it into the controller, and this is way more convenient to own. But the game that showed off the power of this remote was completely different from Wii Sports. You could go canoeing in this one. Wii Sports Resort is a better game than Wii Sports in almost every way. There are more games, modes, and variety. It expanded on Wii Sports in a way that only it could. But there was also something else that the Wii had that I found to be a true fitness game. Not just a game with a fitness theme and fitness minigames. Wii Fit is its name, and it came with this big honker. I didn't get too much out of it, aside from that one platforming minigame, which was surprisingly fun. My problem with the title came down to it being mostly a minigame collection, and the fact that it was more fitness than game, which is why I didn't get too invested in what was going on here. But what if there was a game that was able to strike a good balance between fitness and game? So, more than a decade later, Nintendo gave it another shot with Ring Fit Adventure. This is a game that nobody really talks about, but somehow, like, almost everybody has it. But I'm gonna break that tradition and give my thoughts on this game. I'll start with the game's main gimmick first, the ring. It feels pretty good. It isn't too easy to squeeze, but it also isn't too hard either. But when I try to get the two hands to touch, I just feel like I'm holding a bomb. There's also a leg strap to track the leg movements, and it feels fine, although it does slip down my leg from time to time. But both of these work surprisingly well, and they work way better than old fatty over there. But what kind of game is this? Is it a mini game collection? Oh, oh, oh! Oh, maybe it's uh, like that platforming game from Wii Fit! I'm not the biggest RPG fan, but I will admit that some games can really make it work. My main problem with them is that some of them are very grind based. This is why I like the Paper Mario games, because I'm not just commanding the characters to attack. I have to do this whole button combination as well if I want to pull off the move successfully. It keeps me engaged so I'm not just mashing the A button until the enemy dies. But the question is, does Ring Fit Adventure keep me engaged with this combat? Or am I just squeezing the ring over and over again? Despite all odds, for being a quirky one-off game that nobody talks about, this combat system is really engaging. Every time one of these tumors tries to attack you, a few options appear on what moves you can use to attack the enemy. These consist of different exercises like the plank, the eye press, or overhead bend. Depending on how well you do your exercise, the damage you do will increase. And because different exercises do different amounts of damage to the enemies depending on their color, you're most likely going to be trying different moves instead of the same one multiple times. These colors are designated to their own types of exercises like yoga or stomach workouts. But some enemies are blacking their coloration, meaning that you can't get any attack advantages on them. These guys make for a fun and interesting twist as you could just wither their health away along with other enemies using a range attack, or you could use your most powerful move on it exclusively because the type advantages are irrelevant to it. All of this makes the combat an enjoyable time, even though at the end of the day, I'm just exercising. When it comes down to it, it's a rather simple battle system. 
but the exercises that you do to win the battles make it a whole lot more fun than it would normally be if it was playable with just a controller. And these battles are found all throughout the game's adventure mode. Going into this game, I didn't think the adventure mode would have much to it, and that it would be really short. But instead, I'm just now realizing that there was a new game plus plus. In this adventure mode, you'll be going through mostly linear paths that have a few enemy gates in them. There aren't too many of these in most levels, which I think is for the best, because that would take away from these really relaxing jogs that you go through in these nice landscapes. These levels are just about the perfect length. They're not so short to the point where I'm asking for more, and they're not that long, so I won't go away from a workout looking like I just jumped into a pool. And there are plenty of small things to collect in these levels too, like the standard coins that you can use to buy temporary items that increase your power in some way, as well as clothes that increase your attack and defense as long as you're wearing them. You can also find these three tokens in level that give you some XP, and yeah, this game has XP. You might want to take some notes. This XP goes into making your character's attack, defense, and health permanently higher, which is nice. At least I'm getting something for doing these battles. But another thing about this game's XP system is that you get it after battles, but you also get some more once the stage is complete. After you beat a stage, the game accumulates all the exercises you did and gives you different amounts of XP depending on the obstacles you found within the jog. I see it as a way for the game to show you the progress that you've achieved in the past 15 minutes or so. And all of that makes for a really well balanced experience system that doesn't have any real major flaws. But the main enemy you'll be wanting to take down in this game is Drago and he... Nicely done! He's the main boss you'll be fighting in the game, and every time you encounter him, it's rather good fun. It's like if a normal battle was longer and had cooler attacks to guard. Oh yeah, guarding. It's probably the worst thing about the battle system. You just wait for the enemy to attack you and you do this really easy exercise and then you take less damage than normal. It's just a bit too easy to pull off. So the enemy doesn't pose as much of a threat as it would have if the guard was a bit harder to pull off. But there was this one time when I was fighting Drago and his big attack didn't do any damage. I don't have any footage to show of it, and I'll probably never be able to pull it off again. Speaking of which, sometimes Drago will shake things up a bit and throw a bigger attack at you, and it makes things a tiny bit more interesting, but that's probably because it feels fresh buried underneath all of the ab guards you'll be doing. But the boss itself is still fun outside of that because the battle system itself is still intact, even if the battle goes on for a bit too long sometimes. There are more bosses in the game, but I never got to any of them. For reasons I will get to. So that's the adventure mode. It's pretty good. It is an amazing RPG, mostly because of how basic it is, but it does a great job of being a fitness tool and a game. Speaking of being a tool, there are a wealth of options to choose from, and each slightly tweak your workout to your preference. It really makes your workout feel the way you want it to be. But surprisingly, there's also a bit of side content in this game as well. In the quick play mode, you'll have the ability to play through different exercises, as well as sets of them focusing on a specific part of the body. You're able to jog peacefully through the adventure mode's landscapes, and you can also play through minigames found in gyms during the adventure mode. And I didn't mention it before, but most of these are quite fun. Overall, it's a pretty neat mode that lets you decide how you want to work out. Speaking of letting you decide, custom mode is a thing. And even though I don't use it very often, this makes me truly feel like I'm shaping my own workout. The mode does its job, but there's not much else to it. But a few months later after the game's release, there was a rhythm game mode released for the game, and I really like the mode, and they chose from a few songs from different games like Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. All of these modes pale in comparison to the multitask mode. Hey y'all, Scott here. So that's everything this game has to offer. But even though I had a lot of fun while playing it, I have very little motivation to go back to it. I know that sounds weird because I just praised the game, but just hear me out. This game has a lot of content in its adventure mode. And while that sounds great on paper, it discourages me from going back to it because I feel like I'll never reach the end. And after playing the game for a while, the basic elements and mechanics get a bit boring and samey. I like it more than any old Final Fantasy game, but it takes a lot of work to play for this game. 
When I do play it, I have a lot of fun, but I get a burnt out around 30 minutes in. It's a great game, but it gets less fun as you go along for your workout and the game. But that shouldn't detract from this being a great fitness game. I feel like I'm actually working out while I play for the adventure mode. This isn't like Wii Fit where I'm just moving my hips a little bit. It feels like the game was designed to be both a fun adventure as well as a great fitness application. This is the first game I've ever played that has been able to strike that perfect balance, and it should get all of the praise for it. But there is one game on the Nintendo Fitness game timeline that I didn't talk about. And I never will.